Hey guys, I'm Viola. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very important topic, which is how to get more students on out school. Before we get into that in a second, I just want to show you guys my new classes about to come out on out school. I'm super excited. Check it out. Ooh, I'm going to be sharing how to make pop-up cards coming up soon with kids. I haven't decided what age group I'm gonna make it for yet, but I think Minions will be really popular with little kids. I just made these yesterday because I got some new crafting paper from Amazon for only $4. Got this giant book of 120 pages of colorful paper. And hopefully I'm gonna be taking that into hundreds of dollar in class profits soon. <laughs> I'm really proud of this one. I just made it yesterday. It's a minion pop-up card. And now let's get into our main topic of this video. How to get more students on our school. This is a super important question because how many students you get in your class is directly linked to how much money or profit you can take home. So I am going to offer some of my best tips in this video. Let's dive right in. My first tip is to create ongoing classes. Now, I made a different video talking about the different types of class formats that you can use on our school. There are one-time classes, multi-day courses, flex classes, and ongoing classes. Definitely, you can experiment with all of them and your success may be different from mine, but I've definitely gotten the most students with my ongoing classes. Right now I am teaching uh, an ongoing sassy jazz funk dance class for kids that are nine to 14 years old. And just this Tuesday, I had 11 students in my class, which I charge $15 per person for, uh, which means I took home Mm, how much was it? $115 on that day? Yeah, if my mental math was correct. <laughs> so with ongoing classes, the greatest benefits is that it is like a subscription. Once a student enroll into your class, they are automatically signed up for all the classes to come. So that is really, really awesome for retaining students. If they enjoy your class, they probably won't unsubscribe. Well, sometimes it's not that they didn't like you either. Maybe that time just didn't work for them anymore. But in most cases, if they're free uh, for this time of the week, they will probably be free for the, the same time all the other weeks as well. So you have a really good chance of retaining that same student. Tip number two is to create classes that are similar or related to each other and use the next class feature when you are writing your class description. So when you're creating your class, when you scroll down on the page, there is an option for you to recommend take this class next. And then parents and learners can see that when you've uh, officially listed the class. So right now I have a Little Mermaid trivia and dance class that does really, really well. So I've created some classes that are similar uh, that's related to Disney dance and trivia. So I have Frozen dance and trivia and Lion King dance and trivia. I make sure they are linked to each other in their class listing. What I also do after I teach a class is I send a message to the parent always and I say something along the lines of, thank you so much for dancing with me today. If Sophia is interested, I have some other classes just like this. Uh, I have the Lion King trivia and dance class and the Frozen trivia and dance class. If she wants to dance with me again, I would love to see her. And that works, guys. Make sure to also include the link of the class that you mentioned in your message to parent, yeah? Always make things as easy as possible for your clients. Yes, they are your clients. And I use the bit.ly.ly uh, site to shorten my links so they're not the super long URL. And if you go on the bit.ly website, you can also see if that link is getting any clicks. So super handy, quick tip for y'all. So you may have noticed that my first two tips are all about retaining old students because I really believe that getting a student to stay is just as important as getting new students. When I teach a class, 
I don't hope to see this student one time and never see them again. I want to make them become my fan and they will follow me and I can get to teach them many, many more times. Getting a customer to repeat business with you is easier than trying to find someone new because they've already broken that barrier, they formed a bond with you, they trust you, they like you. So make sure you hold on to them and don't let them go. Well, you know, let them go if you, they want to go, but try your best. Make sure you have a strategy for student retention as well as a strategy for getting more exposure to new clients. Tip number three is to schedule your classes at least two weeks in advance. That is our school's official recommendation. It does take a while for your class to pick up momentum, pick up some traction. Our school may share your class in their email newsletters to parents or promote it on Facebook. So make sure to give them some time to do that. If you want to gather more attention for your class, make sure to schedule at least two weeks in advance. This is tip four, is it? <laughs> Related to scheduling, try out different time zones. So unlike VIP Kid, another different company that I work for where I teach English to kids in China, with our school, you're teaching kids who come from all over the world, yeah? So try out different times. I live in Toronto, Canada, so I'm on Eastern time. Five o'clock for me here is two o'clock on the West Coast and maybe I think 10 p.m. for kids in the UK and uh, what is it, seven o'clock? No, yeah, maybe seven o'clock for kids in Australia. So <laughs> there's a lot of different time zones. I try my best to hit maybe two or three at a time right now for my classes. I try to offer three times a week, one during the weekday, Eastern time, one during weeknight and one during the weekend. So for example, my Thursday class, I offer it at 7 p.m. in the evening. With that, I am trying to target kids who are in North America and are looking for something to do in the evening after school, but also for kids in Australia who are maybe just getting up in the morning. And this year, because of the whole pandemic, a lot of kids are at home. So it's a perfect opportunity to get those kids who are at home during the day in one time zone, but those kids who are at home during the evening in a different time zone. So you wanna experiment with that. This year is especially crazy, right? With the whole pandemic, kids are not sure if they're heading back to school or not in the fall, and the schedules are really all over the place. So give yourself a couple of different options, well, for you and for your kids as well. But I will say that I don't think it's a good idea to offer too many time slots in a week. You risk spreading the students out too much if you do that. So instead of getting five students each in two classes, maybe you get kid where you teach one-on-one -on -one, so you want to open as many time slots as possible and increase your chance of getting students that way here we're trying to work smarter not harder tip number five is to set your availability did you know that in your teacher's dashboard on our school there is a tab for you to say the hours that you are available for booking so if a parent requests a specific time to meet with you, our school will automatically create a section for that class, given that the parent pays and they will do it three weeks in advance. So this is a great way to know what hours work for your learners. So recently I had a little girl come to one of my dance classes and it looks like she really had fun. But afterwards, this was an ongoing class, she canceled her subscription. So I was a little bit disappointed because I thought she really enjoyed and I wonder why she doesn't want to continue doing it anymore. But then the parent requested a different time for me to teach the same class. So then that's when I realized, oh, it's because her schedule doesn't work for this time anymore. So parent requested 
a different time for this class and our school uh, automatically created the time for this class. After I had some other learners who joined this section that was created from one parent's request and that really gave me insight to what hours work for kids of this age group and that takes all the guesswork out of it for me which sometimes is like so confusing you look at the out school scheduling chart and you're just like i don't know what time works and this really really helped me so i suggest you guys test it out tip number six this is six in chinese culture guys teach you something today <laughs> don't just rely on out school to promote you promote yourself yes you can do that share your classes with people that you know word of mouth remains the best kind of marketing tool even today tell everybody your family your friends even if they are not parents if they don't have kids themselves they might know some other people who do right don't be afraid to put yourself out there you never know who may be interested so go ahead and post on your instagram your facebook your blog all that jazz one thing i do want to mention though is that our school does not recommend paying for facebook ads with their data they have not seen success from teachers who have done this and tried this strategy so they do not recommend it and we have come to my final tip of the day and it is simply to be the best teacher that you can be <laughs> i know it's a little bit cliche guys but it's so true aim to give your all in every class and rack up those good reviews rack up those followers that is ultimately what is gonna give you longevity on this platform if you keep getting four stars or three stars reviews it's gonna be really hard for you to get more students, right? I am aiming for five stars every day when I go into class. I try to give so much energy and I really try to interact with every child who shows up for my class. And parents really appreciate that. Learners really appreciate that. When you put in the effort, they know and they recognize you. Owl school is a job that sounds really easy on paper, right? Teach dance for an hour, make $100. But honestly, it is a lot of work. There is so much planning and thinking that goes into it. I'm always trying to create new classes, think about ways to be more creative, create a better student experience. You are essentially a business owner you are running your own business so if you want to be successful on our school as with everything else in life you have to give your 110 percent and that is my final word of the day thank you guys for watching and coming on this our school journey with me i really appreciate you all who have followed me I am going to continue making content for you guys, so please follow me for more. If you enjoy today's tips, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys again next time. Bye!